Hey everyone, and welcome to this video where we'll be building a simple to-do application using Deno and Fresh Framework. So let's take a quick look at what we'll be creating. Uh, at first, you'll be presented with this image and text that tells you that you have no task to complete. When we enter something, learn Deno, it gets added to our list. We can obviously edit or delete the item. So if I go ahead and edit it, and we can add multiple items and remove them. All right, pretty simple. So to be able to build this application, the only thing we really need is to have Deno installed. So we can head over to deno.com, click on runtime installation, and you can pick whichever uh, option fits your need. So in my case, I'm using Windows, so I just selected the PowerShell. I already have Deno installed, so uh, if I go ahead with it, it should be pretty quick. Once you have Deno installed, you can verify your installation by just running Deno version. And you'll see your Deno version. After installing Deno, we can head over to Fresh. Uh, we don't really need to install anything to get Fresh working. Uh, all we need to do is just go into the docs, uh, create project, and we can copy this then our run command to create our new project. So if I go to my command prompt, change this to fresh to do, hit enter. It'll ask us if we want to use tell in CSS. In my case, I'll say yes. And if we're using VS Code, which I am. So I'll say yes, and it'll create our project. I can CD into it and then type Deno task start to start our server. And we're all set up to get started. So I went ahead and opened uh, my project in uh, VS Code. First thing that we're going to do is just delete everything. So we'll get rid of everything in routes because we need that. We'll get rid of our islands and our components. And we'll start fresh from there. For our project, we're only going to have one route, which is the root route. And uh, fresh follows a file system routing convention. So this means everything we have inside of our route folder is going to be is going to correspond to the routes for our application. So we'll have only one, which is the route, or the root route. So I'll create an index. Dot tsx index will correspond to the root route. First thing, we'll need to export a function which we'll call home that returns a React component. Afterwards, uh, we'll create a body tag to change the background color to gray. Uh, then we can create a div which will store our title inputs and images with a white background and some CSS to make it look like a card. And inside of that div, we're going to add our title and logo image. The logo is provided by Fresh. So if we head over to our static folder, we see that we, autom we already have this logo. Now, if we run our application, then a task run, then a task start and not run. And we go over to our to our page. We can see that we have the title and the logo with a gray background and a white card. Okay, so back in VS Code, we need to create an interface to represent our to dos. Uh, I'll go ahead and create a new folder called Interfaces to store all our interface and create a file called I to do ts our TypeScript file. So our interface will only contain an ID and a title. So back into our home component uh, in our index file, uh, we want a island to store our dynamic code that will allow us to view and add to-dos. So to do that, we'll create a new file inside of the islands folder. So I'll call mine to dos.tsx. 
So if you're not familiar with what islands are, uh, basically Fresh makes use of the island architecture. In essence, it's a way of dealing with static content and dynamic content. Having a lot of JavaScript on the page makes it slow. Less JavaScript makes it faster. So how can we only use JavaScript when we need it? This is where Island comes in. Uh, it's a way of designing your website that divides your page into two types of regions, static regions and dynamic regions. Static regions are pure HTML that don't need any JavaScript. Dynamic regions are small pieces of HTML and JavaScript that can do something interactive. These species are called islands because they're isolated from the rest of the page. The idea is that you only use JavaScript for the islands and not for the whole page. That way you reduce the amount of JavaScript and make your website faster and lighter. So in our case, we want to add to-dos to a list and we want to dynamically edit them and remove them from, the, from that list. So for this case, we'll make use of an island component. So to create our island, we want to first import use state and use ref hooks from React that allows us to use state and references. We also want to import our to-do interface. Our island needs to export a function with the same name that we expect to call it in our route. So in our case, it's to-dos. We use the use state hook from React to create a state variable called counter uh, with an initial value of zero. The use state hook returns an array with two elements, the current value of the state variable and a function to update its value, which is called set counter. Uh, we'll make use of this counter instead of a database UID. Uh, so we will increment it whenever we add a new item to our to-do list, uh, just for a way to manage editing and deleting from that list. We'll do the same for our to-dos, but instead of a number, we make use of our interface and we initialize it as an empty list. We start with no to-dos. We create a constant using the use ref hook with an initial value of null. This will create a reference to an HTML input uh, element to help us get whatever value was typed into the input form. So whenever we type a to-do to add, using this reference, we'll be able to get its value and add it to the list. We then want to go ahead and create some helper functions to add, remove, and update to-dos. Our first one will be to add a new to-do. Uh, so we will call the prevent default on the event to prevent the form submission from redirecting the page. We want to check if our input has any value by making use of our reference that we created above. If there's a value, we are going to go ahead and create a new object, a new to-do object. We will set, we will call set to-dos to update our list. We simply take the previous state which at first would be an empty list, and we add our new object to it. We are finally going to increment our counter in the same fashion, taking the previous state and increasing it by one and inserted it again. Uh, and we will clear our input form in the UI. Next is the delete function. Uh, it's pretty simple. It takes an ID and uses the filter functions from our to-do array to return all items that don't have the same ID. We then set that as our, no, our, our new list of to-dos. The edit functionality takes a to-do object. It uses the set to-dos function to update the state of a to-do variable. Uh, the set to do function is called with an updater function that takes the previous value of the to do state as its argument and returns a new value for the state. The updater function uses the map method of the previous to do's array to create a new array where each element is either the same uh, as in the previous array or if its ID property matches the ID property of the to do argument, it's replaced with the to do object. Finally, we're going to want to return our GSX element. Uh, we'll first create a form with the onSubmit fun function calling our new to-do function that we created above. 
This will be called whenever we hit the enter button on the form. On the form. Uh, then we create our input field and pass it our reference constant. Uh, there's some CSS just to make it a bit pretty. Then we'll make use of brackets to insert some JavaScript. We check if the length of our to-do is greater than zero. Uh, if it's bigger than zero, we're going to go ahead and map over each to-do and simply output the title in the case that it's equal to zero. So we have nothing in our list. We're just going to display a image with some text saying that we have nothing. Uh, the image will be in the description. If you're curious where I got it from, I just went to undraw and selected a random image, downloaded the CSV for it, and then we can go ahead and add it into our static folder. So I'll go ahead and add that image. So if we hit save now and go into our page, we can see that nothing is being displayed. That's because we haven't actually added our island into our route. So we can head over to the index.tsx file in our routes folder. And right under this div, we can go ahead and at our new island, which is the name of the exported function. We can import this island. Now, if we had save and go back to our page, we should see the image telling us that we have nothing to do. Uh, we can go ahead and add some items. Hello. And we see that it displays the title for that item. We can add more items. and they're just stacked on top of each other displaying their title. So next step is gonna to be to create a component which will display those to-dos with a icon for editing and an icon for removing each to-do. The new component is gonna be called to-do. So I'll head over into our components folder and I'll add a new file called to-do.tsx. So inside of the to-do component, similar to our island, we will import use state and use ref. We also want to import our to-do interface. We want to be able to pass data to this component. So we will create a new interface called to-do props. Uh, which will represent the data that this component expects. So we want it to be able to have a to-do object. We also want a function that tells it how to delete an item. This delete function is the one that we created in our island, and we will just pass it along to this component so that whenever we click the delete button, it executes that function. We also want a function to tell it how to edit an item. This was also created in our island and similar to the delete function, this will be passed down to this component. We then want to export a function with the same name that we expect to call it in our island component. So this will be called as a to-do tag. Uh, we specified the properties uh, as arguments for this component by destructuring them so they can be directly accessible by their names. We use the useState hook to create a state variable called isEdit and initialize it as false. This will let us toggle between displaying the to-do's title and displaying a form to edit the to-do whenever we click on the Edit button. We create an input ref to get the value from the input field when is edit is set to true. This is similar to how we did uh, adding items to our to-do list in the island component. Uh, for our to-do component, we only need one helper function, which will handle our on edit action. 
uh, when we hit submit uh, after trying to update the title uh, of a, our current to-do, uh, we first will call the prevent default function on the event to prevent it from changing the page. Uh, we then check if there's any value in our input. If there is, we create a new object with the same ID as the current to-do. We will then call on to-do edit, which we got as an argument in the component. Uh, on to-do edit expects a to-do object, and it will run whatever code we had written in our island. So in our case, it will map uh, over all the to-dos to find one that matches this new object, and it will it will change the title for it. Finally, we want to set the edit uh, variable back to false so that we stop displaying the input field and show the title for it. And next, we are going to return our JSX element. Uh, we will first create a div to store everything. It will have a gray background and some margin. It will also handle uh, displaying the title on the left and the icons on the right. We are going to make use of brackets to insert some JavaScript. Uh, we will check if is to do is true or false. In the case that it's true, we want to show a form to update the title for this to do. The on submit will call the on edit to do that we just created above. Uh, for the input, we just need to make sure that we're passing our input ref so that we can get the value from this input. And we are also populating the value of this input. We are pre-populating it with the current to-do title. Uh, then we, in the case that is edit is false, we are simply going to display the title for it. Uh, last div is going to handle our action buttons. So our edit and our remove, our delete button. So we will create a button with an onClick method. Uh, this will allow us to edit any to-do. Basically, we are just going to be toggling the isEdit uh, variable from true to false. So we take the previous state and we just return the opposite of it. If it was true, we return false. If it was false, we return true. Uh, the second button is going to do pretty much the same thing. It's, instead, it's going to call the on to do remove uh, function, which was passed as a prop as an argument into our component, and we are going to pass it the to do ID. This will allow it to remove whatever to do with this ID. Now, for our buttons, we could uh, add some text to display what they're to show what they're doing or add an icon for the icon i'm just going to get head over to hero icons i will search for edit icon i will copy the svg and simply copy paste it here i will do the same thing for our delete icon i will search for a trash image Oops. copy the svg and I'm going to pass it here. And great. So now we just completed our to-do component. If we head over to our server, we should see no updates because we haven't made use of it yet. So to make use of it, we can go over to our island component. And here, instead of displaying, displaying a P tag, we are going to change this into a to-do component. We can see that we have an error. That's because our to-do component is expecting some arguments. So we will go and give it the arguments that it's expecting. So it's expecting a to-do, on to-do edit, and on to-do remove. For to-do, 
this is the to do object that we are mapping over. Uh, for the on to do edit, we will pass it the on edit to do function. And for on to do remove, we will pass it on remove to do. Now, if we had save and head over to our web page, we should now be able to add to do's, edit them and remove them. So if I type in learn fresh, now we see our component with the gray background, the title and the icons for editing and removing. So let's try and edit. So whenever we click on edit, it toggles our is edit uh, field from true to false. This allows us to display the input or show the title. So if I change this to now go play outside and hit enter, it gets updated. And if I add something else, go to park, finish video, we can see they're all added with some padding at margin and I can go ahead and delete some. Great, so that concludes the video where we created a simple to-do application using Fresh.